So, last time you left Thunder Tree after clearing the town of all ash zombies and plant monsters and one dragon. Uh, from there, you made your way to First Light Keep, uh, which is now in the hands of the Silver Lords. They met up with the soldiers that Gerald had summoned and they had begun reconstruction efforts, and you were all very impressed that they got started on what you wanted them to without even asking. Uh, from there, you headed back into Fandolin, talked with the local son, worked a little bit on your campaign, turned in all your quest stuff to get all the rewards, recruited guard captain Finn and Gundren to come help you clear your Wave Echo Cave, and you set off for the Lost Mines. Up at the entrance, you're sort of ambushed, but not really, because certain items in party hands, uh, by uh, Lenny Frito's Arch... Nemesis, I guess is what you could call him. Lenny Testicles, I think his name was. I believe it was Balzac. Balzac, Jim. Who you finished off and killed, even though it was a tougher fight than I believe you were expecting. Uh, and he dropped some very good loot for the party, uh, which Frito is holding on to, and he's attuned to one of the items. Yeah, uh, oh. if, so if you I... guys too, um... I'm going to hang on to the amulet and his rapier, but if you guys want anything else that I picked up from him, uh, feel free to just say. I think I'll there's a wolf in the one. distance that wants it. Grr. Grr. I'll, I'll look at your inventory. But uh, we're all outside. What's the what's the scenery like around us? Is this like a snowy hill? Uh, <laughs> since we are not in the ice dales and it is not at the peak of the mountain it isn't so much snowy as it is a barren and hilly okay is it windy you're not up in the mountains you're at like the base of the mountain okay okay sure uh so rising up in front of you is part of the sword mountains which is a range of mountains that run between uh neverwinter and water deep and it's still early morning right Yeah, you guys only have been traveling for maybe like two hours, so it's like 10 a.m. You guys are battered and bruised, some of you. Some of you are didn't get hit, so you're in fine health. Um, And you see before you, uh, carved into the mountainside, a tunnel that is uh, 10 feet high and probably wide enough for two of you to walk down at a time. I'm just looking at Frito's inventory. Maybe Robert should take the armor of lightning resistance, because I think it will give you the same AC, but then you'll have lightning resistance. But it depends on, uh, you know, the drip and all that good stuff. Do you vibe with it and all that? It, it does give you the same exact AC. How, how drippy does it look exactly? Um, so it looks remarkably similar to the armor you're already wearing, but you have blue, like, runes etched into some of the creases. It's pretty drippy, bro. It sounds pretty drippy to me. I'll take it. All right. Frito, good with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, the other thing, too, is if someone would want the rapier, like, it would be better than the rapier I got from Lenny. Um, I mean, you could have it just with the knowledge that I would request it back once I uh, am, like, able to dual wield and stuff like that. Uh, I can't use it. My My blade will hinder me too much. I just got rid of disadvantage, so I don't feel like getting it back. <laughs> Welcome back. Big so Bobby, do you want the rapier? Or would Gerald want it? Uh, How much uh, damage does the rapier do? Uh, the rapier. <laughs> Andrew's uh, just collecting one. all the extra magic <laughs> items. I mean, it's only if you're actually going to use it. If not, then I'm just going to hang on to it. It does 1d8 plus 3, and if you get a 20 on the attack, you do an extra 10 damage, and you also gain tem- 10 temporary hit points. Sheesh! That's if the creature you're attacking isn't a construct or an undead. Right, if you can actually suffer. Is it a finesse, or...? Uh, it's a rapier, so yes. Yep. Oh yeah, it's a rapier. I'm proficient in rapiers. Yeah, I'll take it. Alrighty. That's a you're rapier right. of life stealing. Uh, I would Kinda say Kind of like Gerald... how Frito stole the guy who was wielding its life. <laughs> a bit. Damn right. Like that. <laughs> I would say Gerald is interested, but he has a sword that erupts in fire. <laughs> Damn. I I thought you were going to say erupts in applause. Every time he kills somebody. Yeah, he swings the sword and it goes, yeah! Kill another one! He, he, thinks it's the sword. he thinks it's the sword. It's really just the three of you. <laughs> yeah, it's his ego in his head. 
Um, yeah, you guys are slowly collecting a bunch of magical items. So we watch uh, Robert slowly strip off his armor and put new armor on. Essentially. Would Don't Gerald you want the, uh, the boots, since he's kind of slow? Um, he... Uh. <laughs> If you don't want the boots, I'll take them back. Okay, yeah, you can have them. Uh, so everyone sort of... Since we took a short rest, can I attune to the boots? Um... Or are we saying we I'll... trade it after? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm like. How kind do I want to be? Nah, you can... Yeah, you can say you are tuned. I spend 30 minutes walking around in them like you do at the shoe store, like trying to make sure they feel right. Exactly. Pressing on the toe. Um, uh, one thing then, uh, if you have it written down somewhere else, Nick, uh, if you could remove those two things from your inventory, just so you don't accidentally use them when you, and all of a sudden have, we have duplicate weapons sitting out. Oh, so you still have the Jade Frog statue in your inventory. Oopsies. If the Banshee finds out that you, that you never, <laughs> he's like, oh, actually gave it to her. She's been uh, blind the whole time. Thank you for all these treasures. She's just completely naked in an <laughs> empty cave. <laughs> okay, so you have to tune to... So, Andrew, uh, you have the choice to either tune... Mainly because you have four items, and you only have three slots for attunement. So you either can attune to the lightning resistance and get the lightning resistance, or you can attune to the rapier and get the life-stealing aspect. Yeah, we're good. All right, which one did you attune to? The blade. Oh, rapier. You just uh, look drippy, but you don't get lightning resistance. Exactly. I make them think that I do. We're at that point uh, where... You got ugly resistance. You guys have and too my... many magical items, so you're starting to have to pick and choose. Yeah. Um, These ugly people away from me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for sure, man. Um... <laughs> so, I, if you really wanted to, you could give stuff to your companions. True. Though they both have stuff that is better. Yeah. No. Yeah, they, they can they can t handle themselves. Uh, I want to approach the opening to the cave and cast dancing lights and just sort of send them down the path to see what I see. Don't you have really good dark vision? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. But I guess for other people who don't, I do it. The other, in, the one individual who can't see in there. Oh, and Finn, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Finn's a filthy human. He doesn't matter. So, why don't we bring him? Because you thought you were going to need him. And Kill him. One level up later, Gundra just like created a, like a floating sentient piece of armor next to him. We brought <laughs> him because we thought he'd bring his dog Jake with him, but the dog never showed up. There was no dog. I never promised a dog. Cleveland steamer with Lady Rainicorn again. Oh, hey. All right, so... let's move on. <laughs> Leave Cleveland out of this, all right? Uh, so, for Robert and... Finn, I guess, as you guys gather around the door. Uh, Frito, Gerald, and Gundren can all see 60 feet down uh, the tunnel. And it, it still looks like all tunnel all the way down that. Um, Holy shit. Oris already, with his 120 feet of dark vision, uh, can see that uh, just beyond that 60 feet, it sort of extends into a cavernous area. Uh, so you send the dancing lights down there, which can go 120 feet. So it, it only helps illuminate within your own dark vision range. Nice. Which, which I find hilarious. Uh, but do I see person... anything as it's moving down the path? Do I see anything along the walls or? Um, give me perception now that you are actively looking, or investigation. I always forget first. to grab my dice. It's almost like you need these to play D and D or something. No, that's crazy. Uh, unnatural 20. Um, you do not uh, see what I assume you're looking for, which is like traps, drawings on the wall. <laughs> a goblin holding onto the wall <laughs> waiting to jump down. Yeah, you, you don't see anything suspicious along the hallway leading towards the cavern. Uh, you can't see great in the cavern. You only can really see like directly in front of the tunnel. And it doesn't really give you much um, sight on anything else that might be in there. But in the section you can see of the cavern, you don't uh, see anything suspicious. Alright, I'm waving my fingers around as the dancing lights moves, and then I unsummon it. Put my shield on my arm once again. I, I picture that when I'm riding the horse, I have my shield on my back, and then my sword obviously sh sheathed. And I put my take my shield out, pull out my sword. 
Seems clear. And you guys are leaving the horses and the oxen and the wagon outside. Yeah. Okay. Dump it that's in the hole. hole. Uh, that's what I figured. Uh, <laughs> it seems clear. Robert, lead the way. <laughs> Sending the blind. Yeah. Answers. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. <laughs> Could we, like, uh, try and hide the oxen in the wagon, just in case someone just walk along um, and park our shit? There's not a lot of hiding spots. So you're in a sort of uh, low area surrounded by some hills, and there's, like, some sparse trees. Uh, but these are, like, the trees that, like, you can tell they're not getting enough water. They're barely surviving as it is. They're, like, half dead. Um, so you, you could potentially uh, try to hide stuff that's a little less noticeable. The hill would be blocking some of the view coming from certain directions. Um, is that what you would like to try? Uh, yeah. Uh, better than nothing, I guess. Alright, uh, if you could give me stealth. Uh, does anyone wish to help uh, with I'm, that? Uh, I'm too preoccupied staring down the hole. Uh, Finn will help you hide stuff. So you can roll with advantage for the hiding. Uh, 12. 12? Alright. Well, as I said earlier, it's not a great place. You're able to, like, get the cart you get the horses and the oxen into the sort of divot between the hill and the mountain and then you put the cart in front of them sort of protect them in case anyone comes along if someone looked even remotely for a little bit they'd see that it's there but it's better than no protection also who's gonna like come up here around the open. that's the other point uh as far as you know everyone who would potentially try to attack you is already in the cave how the fuck did Lenny know where the fucking cave was? Oh, wait, he worked for the spider. The spider probably knows. Or he was tracking you guys. That's another possibility. No, he has to know where the cave is. Because <laughs> he was ahead of us, right? He didn't come no. from behind. He walked in from the side. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, get the horses and stuff ready. And then you start making your way down the tunnel. Once I realize that Robert is blind, I will cast Dancing Lights and go first. (laughs) All right. You cast Dancing Lights. I thought he also had the cantrip, but I guess he doesn't. I don't know. No, he... he, Not I don't know, but I don't come. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I don't know. Um, I can't see it. (laughs) All right. Because I'm blind, right? Oh, okay. Uh, Uh, Make your way down the tunnel. It looks like a typical mine shaft, like someone dug this in here it does look uh this looks more natural uh with a little bit of extra mining than like this was once truly part of a large mining complex uh and as you head down you eventually reach the cavern i mentioned earlier and you step out uh the entrance tunnel leads into a large natural cavern supported by pillars of rock in the western part of the cave behind a pillar are three bed rolls and a heap of ordinary supplies, sacks of flowers, bags of salt, casks of salted meat, lanterns, flasks of lamp oil, pickaxes, shovel, and other gears. Amidst the supplies, you see a body of a dwarf. Uh, the northeastern section of the cavern has collapsed, uh, forming a 10 foot wide, 20 foot deep pit. A uh, sturdy hemp rope is tied around one of the three stalagmites in the cavern and dangles into the pit. All right, well, if I'm leading the way, I put my hand out to stop everybody. And then I sort of crouch down, and I motion for everyone to crouch as well. Does everybody crouch down with me? Yes. Um, yeah. I, I don't think the robot can, but those who well, can... Well, it's small, right? Doesn't really say. <laughs> okay, well, it's fine if it can't crouch. I'll just talk to the humanoids. Okay, so there's a some sort of camp... Up ahead, supplies everywhere, and I see a body. Uh, Frito, do you want to cast that special magic you do sometimes where it feels like we have less chance of dying? Work, Uh, that's a good idea. At this point, uh, Gondrin speaks up and says, Ah, yes, uh, the campsite, at least, belonged to me and my brothers when we first rediscovered this infant. Gundren, you're gonna make me sad. Why? What's up? Um, I'm feeling really stealthy right now, so I'm gonna stealth over there and see what I can see. Oh wait, no, we got a guy that can go invisible. Never mind. We'll send him. (laughs) (laughs) Have you used uh, that spell yet today? Nope. Alright, this will be your one use. Walk to the entrance of the cave and... Oh, the dude, that's all we did. If... 
I, I, I doubt this would work, but if I gave uh, um, Robert my drow goggles, would he be able to see in the dark while he's invisible? I think specifically there's something on the goggles where it's like if this person... I read something and it sounds like it only works. Uh, oh, if you think. do not have dark vision, you are blinded when wearing these. Never mind. Yeah. I get mega dark vision. He puts them on. He's like, oh, what the? Where did everything go? It's worse! It's worse! And it starts yelling. You it's want worse. to be able to see. Uh, Gundren speaks up. I mean, with my tinkering, I could create a light source for you if you wanted me to. That would be great. It kind of defeats the purpose of him going invisible, though. It would. Maybe I should just go check. Real quick. I'll pop over, check, pop right back. Nobody will see me. <clears throat> There's probably no one in here. It's probably the whole, probably the whole goddamn cave's empty. All right. Uh, you stealth on over. Yeah. Does Frito cast this, his his uh, thing? Uh, yeah, I can cast Inspiring Leader on everyone. Oh, so uh, you only can select six targets, right? Uh, yes. And there's six of you. Perfect. Yeah. Fuck that robot. <laughs> Yeah, I figured the thing that when it dies can just be brought back to life, you weren't going to give temporary health to. So we all sit in this hallway area <laughs> while Frito whispers an inspiring speech to us. For ten minutes. Uh, what's what's the speech about? We can do this. Or <laughs> something. I don't know. <laughs> well, I feel inspired. Nothing about the defeat of your lifelong enemy. Nothing inspiring from that. All right. Uh, how much temp HP is it? Nine? Uh, nine. That's correct. Alright, everyone gets nine temporary HP. That will be helpful. Alright. Wherever the camp is on this map, I'll go look over at it. Alright. Uh, so you make your way over here. That's the west. Uh, yeah, you make your way over here. Um, give me the self throw. <coughs> Speaking of nine. You got a nine? Yeah. Your entire cave uh, right. you. Uh, you're just so worried that something's in here and it's going to see you that you're like, you're putting too much effort into trying to be stealthy. So you like stumble over some stuff every now and again and like make a few noises as you hit off rocks. However, uh, with your passive perception, a 14, uh, as you're walking, you don't notice anything. Uh, leaping out at you in danger and Rito because what's the range of your rapier warning that you're using actively? <laughs> no, no. 30 feet, right? Uh, 30 feet, that's correct. Alright, so he wouldn't notice anything anyway, but uh, nothing comes out and attacks you. You make your way over uh, and you notice there's the three bed rolls and there's the bunch of supplies. Uh, what are you looking to do? Can I incite the dead body to see if they look related to Gundren? Alright, give me investigation. First. Natural 20. Natural 20. Um, you... <clears throat> you look over the body. Uh, from what you can tell from the... Uh, the beginnings of decomposition and everything, it looks like this body has been here a week. Um, so about the time you guys got Gundren... Back to Fandolin, I believe. Maybe a little after? Yeah. It's like around that time you guys set out to go deal with all the side quests. This is Gundren! Um, no, I'm just uh, you search, uh, as you're poking around on the body, you do notice that he's wearing a cloak that looks highly valuable to you. Um, and then uh, I'll let you go ahead and give your insight with advantage because you're going to that nat 20 on the investigation. Oh, yeah. Uh, my insight is plus four, so 15. 15? Um, unfortunately, looking at the body of this dwarf does have some family resemblance. Shit. There goes our 16%. Well, I can't remember <laughs> if we said that they had to be alive or not, but... Um... There, there's a moment nobody else can hear this, but Oris just thinks in his th head, like, "Oh shit, we gotta kill Gundren." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he immediately, I mean, removes that thought from his brain. 
You guys signed a contract, I think, right? Do you not have a copy of it? I don't think we signed a contract. We shook hands. I, oh, okay. Whatever. I, I'll worry about yeah. that later. I'm illiterate. And I'll sneak back over to the group. Alright. You make your way back over to the group. Okay. I describe through words what the body looked like. Okay. So it's a dwarf with reddish hair, uh, green eyes, short beard, long hair. Uh, and as you're describing that, Gundred's like, no! Uh, and Greedo would also recognize this description. Uh, this is the corpse of Tharden, one of Gundren's brothers. Not Tharden. Oh. I hope they still lived, but I suppose my treatment at the hands of the minions of the spiders was reason to give me much hope. Listen, there's still a chance if we go quick that we can find Nundro before whatever happened to Tharden happens to him. Yes, there, there's always that chance. Thank you for giving me that hope, Horus. Yeah. I mean, shit. I, I know you guys all knew what you were getting yourselves into, but this is some deep doo-doo, man. Yes. I hope it's worth it. I hope the Forge of Spells is worth it as well. I hope you get in insanely rich as a trade for both of your brothers dying. Anyway, let's go! Hopefully just one of them. <laughs> that man's like, I don't gotta share shit with those boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you head, for the, you head out into the room? Did you do yeah. anything with uh, the cloak I described, or did you just leave it on? I think Arden? now, I left it there, but I'll lead the group over to that area. All right, everyone heads on over towards the camp's side. Uh, the little automaton will step behind. Oh man, uh, you make your way over there, uh, and you see Gundren's like, hum, I'm surprised Tharden still has it. I would have thought the spider would have taken it. Ah, uh, he's still wearing his cloak of protection. Cloak of protection. Clearly it didn't work very well. Well, there's only so much protection magic can give you before so it fails. If the spider <clears throat> would have taken it, perhaps it wasn't the spider that killed him. There's some bullshit going on. Um He's in there always. Gundren, what does the cloak do? Wait, uh if I remember from, at least in Baldur's Gate, I think it raises your AC by one. Um, there are master wand around here. As he's describing what it does, I'm slowly yeah. taking it off the body <laughs> and placing uh, it in my backpack. You gain, you gain plus one to AC and saving throws while you wear the cloak. I place it in my backpack. Well, you have to attune to it. Yeah, I assumed. Uh, that's that's all right, horse. Yeah. Would you mind if I held on to my brother's clothes? Yeah, you can have the rest of it. <laughs> you well, said, remember, you said we can have all non-forged items. Uh, I suppose you're going to take that to a T and not make an exception for my brother's dead, my dead <sighs> brother's belongings. Let's I... show the man some respect here. Let him have his brother's stuff. It's... I... <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> How am I the bad guy here? Ah, oh, fuck it. Take the cloak. Uh... The fact that you have to ask that is wild. <laughs> he is a drow. I rob people. Shut up, Robert. Uh, drows have to uh... Smoke some shit, you... <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I'm the skinniest person here. Yeah, it's a problem. Anything, I'm anorexic. Hello, anorexic. Um, uh, you see Gondrin approaches, uh, the body and starts, um, I guess preparing it for burial as best he can. He gets some of the stuff with him, closes his eyes, uh, and you see him head over to the camping supplies and get some of the lamp oil and starts pouring it over his brother. Fucking bullshit. 
Do dwarves eat their people too? Um, and then unless anyone says anything, he steps back and firebolts the oil and starts the process of sending his brother back to the stone. I guess I kind of salute, but like half-heartedly. What about you, Frito? This is one of your one of your brothers, <coughs> uh, your friend's best friend's brother. Funeral. Uh, Frito will console Gundren as his brother burned. Uh, you see him crying a little bit. Uh, and then over time, the body turns to ash. <laughs> as he's crying... No, I'm not gonna do it. You're gonna steal the cloak. <laughs> I want that fucking cloak, bro. I hate being a good person. <laughs> yeah, no. There's a lot of other loot in here that might be better. There's, it also might be worse. The thought re-enters my head of like, holy <laughs> shit, I'm gonna have to kill Gundren. <laughs> but I don't say anything. Uh... I'm scared of myself. All right. Um, it takes like half an hour of the body turns to ash. Gundren, he leaves the ash there because he believes in letting the ash return into the stone. Um, and you guys have had a nice little funeral for Tharden. If I walk over here, can I see anything more or is this a wall? Uh, yeah, you walk up to the edge of the drop I described earlier. Was this the hole that one of Andrew's characters fell in? Yeah, no. last time we played this, <laughs> I described it. I didn't describe it to you guys, and had you rolled to see if you noticed it, and you failed horribly. <laughs> I think there's an animation of that somewhere. Yep. Because I still, still didn't fully understand how to be a good DM at that point. Um, Shatter your legs. What? All right, you walk up to the edge of the cliff. Not cliff, it's not really a cliff. It's only like 10 feet down, I think. No, it's 20 feet down. Uh, so it's a bit of a drop. Uh, and as you look down uh, into the pit, uh, you notice... Any bodies in there? Uh, you do notice a bot. Sorry, I was clicking on the wrong... No. I wasn't using the mouse, I was using the reveal area button, uh, so it didn't accomplish anything. Uh, you notice the body of a dead goblin. Does it look weird? Uh, give me investigation. It looks really lanky and has a gem sticking out of its head. Oh my god, he's dead! Eleven. Um, looking at it, you notice that... Uh, it is not a Kragmar goblin, and you can tell this because its skull is slightly elongated, and it has green streaks on its skin. If I if I sit down on the edge, can I slide down into the pit? <clears throat> uh, there are... Th uh, you do notice there's a rope uh, tied to uh, the stalagmite over there that drops down. I don't down trust that. Down. Okay. Um, sure, give me acrobatics or athletics. Okay. Acrobatics, I guess. 19. Alright, you very carefully move your way down with the hole into. Uh, does everyone else sort of follow suit? Yeah, I'll follow him. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm gonna stay up top. <laughs> Uh, Gerald will go down. He'll take the rope, uh, which just means it is difficult terrain, so he gets down there <laughs> pretty easily. Then we'll I'm all dirty. Frito. <laughs> Gunjin will go down with his robot just sort of jumping and falling. Uh, and Frito. Uh, do you drop down? How do you get down, Frito? Not Frito. I thought he was staying up. Oh, sorry, Robert. How do you get down? <laughs> I get you to fucking confused for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll use the rope as well. All right. uh, everyone else makes it down, climbing on the rope. 
and it doesn't break. It's By the wait. time I finish dusting my pants off, they're all already down here. Also, yeah. I like to imagine that the robot sounds like a trash can hitting the bottom of a well <laughs> when it poosh, lands. Oh, <laughs> metal bar. 100%. Yeah. He, he made this out of, like, just scrap parts that just happened to be lying in the wagon. Alright, well, I I walk up. Uh, well, can is there anything else I see down here, or is it just the goblin? Uh, you see two uh, tunnels. Uh, one to the northwest and one to the east at the south of the gap that uh, lead further into the cave. Alright, well, I kneel down next to the goblin, and I sort of, like, grab its head. Looky here, everybody. This look like any type of, type of goblin you've ever seen? Gundren? I mean, it looks like a regular goblin that's had some weird shit done to it, but that's about it. <laughs> that's what everyone tries to... I keep getting gaslit into this idea that they're just regular goblins with long heads. No, this is this is something else. I mean, I'm just saying, I haven't seen a goblin you that looks like being racist. before. All right, I've only seen regular goblins, and that's what this looks like, except this had weird shit done. Uh, I'm gonna take my wraith blade, I'm, I'm, and I'm gonna stab it in the chest and try to open it up. If there's a bunch of little pixies in here, I'm gonna feel like a genius. All right, you, uh, give me an attack roll with advantage, because it's actually sure. It probably just happens because it's dead and it's not trying to uh, dodge you. So you cut opens its stomach, and a bunch of goblin guts come out. Aha! Ugh, shit. Um, are you gonna eat those? <laughs> I. Did, what? 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 Were you whispering that to yourself? Uh, um, no. We all heard it. Okay, well. Oh, shit. I stand up. I try to get the blood off my hands, but it's not going anywhere. Put my blade away. <clears throat> um, that was disgusting. Why did I do that? Gerald's like, I think you thought there was pixies in there. You know him so well. You just get me, man. Also, you said that out loud. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm going loopy too, Robert. You need uh, some slither gonna... still? No, no, I don't I need like... it to be loopy. I'm I'm going crazy on my own. I'm on some Kanye shit. <laughs> I think you, you, you probably confide, confide in Gerald the most. Yeah. Time and stuff, so. One late <laughs> night, I said, I swear there's got to be pixies inside one of those goblins. <laughs> so you're just like telling Gerald all your wild theories and stuff about the goblins? <laughs> I'm gonna bust it open like a pinata. It's gonna be great. <laughs> um, uh, at that point, guns, guns, guns dude, what? Well, which direction should we head in? Well, this is the furthest me and my brothers ever made it. You you came down to this hole? Well, no, I meant the campsite. Oh, right. Okay. It's an interest. There was no other place to go other than this hole, right? I cast dancing lights again and shine both entrances. What do you feel what do you feel in Robert in your in your loins? And down to the right is looking real uh real drippy, if you know what I mean. No, but uh I'll go along with it. Fantastic. Alright, we go down to the right. I assume you mean the east passage. Yes. Alright. Uh I guess Ben Finn comes down and joins you guys. Brito, do you join? Yeah, I'll uh, <laughs> slide down and... Are you taking the floor. rope, or are you just sliding down the mount, the, hit, the hill? Like, the drop? Uh, I'll take the rope, I guess. Alright, smart man. Uh, you just so climb I down the mountain. insert itself in your anus. Yeah, everyone else passes with no problem. On you, it breaks, and then... Okay. Um... <laughs> uh, you guys make your way... Through the tunnel. Uh, let me do the puzzle. I can't see anything! Ah! Oh. Obviously that. He took my eyes! Oh, you, my friend. But, Hell yeah, uh, brother. Demand him. Demand him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> JJ? <laughs> Ooh! And penis in Chinese. Oh my god. Uh, so... I did it again, so uh, I will make, make it You make your way forward with everyone following you. I'll move everyone when that comes up. Um, you come to this first crossroad. Uh, do you keep going forward into the larger area, or do you start making your way If I look forward? north, what do I see? Uh, turning north, 
you see Ooh. more things. Okay, so the way east looks like it's a natural cave, and the way forward looks like it was more built. Mine. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to walk back over to everyone else oh, and tell them what I saw. East is natural cave, and there's three passages. Uh, north is mine shaft, and there's two ways at least. And then you also noticed in the central larger natural cavern uh, that four tunnels intersect at this 30-foot high cavern. The walls are carved with simple relief showing dwarf and gnome miners at work. Nearly two dozen skeletons and rusted scraps of armor are scattered across the cavern floor. Some are dwarf skeletons, while others appear to be the remains of larger individuals. Half a dozen unlit brass lanterns stand in uh, niches or on ledges around the cavern. Wait, uh, I may have misheard you. Are there actively gnomes and dwarves working, or are they all dead? Pictures, Pictures. on the walls. Pictures. And then skeletons. Oh yeah, and back in the... Oh, not back. Forward into the cavernous area, there's a bunch of skeletons, which freaks me the fuck out, especially with all the necromancers we've been dealing with recently. And I see pictures of people that probably worked here at some point. Pictures scare me too. I know, right? It could to be a chance. They're gonna get Gerald their lick back on you. Does it give <laughs> you a chance to learn more about the history? Of what happened here? Hmm. Yes. Uh, did the mine shaft way have lights? No. Well, Robert, what are you feeling? Mine shaft or skeletons? I kind of want to go look at the skeletons. All right. I grab his hand and start leading him <laughs> forward. All right. Uh, you guys make your way this way. You're dragging him. Barrel. Little falls behind. Gundren. And his little robot. Then. Grab it onto Robert's hand because he's also blind. Rito, you follow? Yes, sir. Right. Probably about there. Uh, and as you look around at the f uh, floor uh, and looking around at these skeletons, you notice uh, that. Uh, they're a mixture of different creatures. Some are more stockily built, like dwarves. There's also some smaller skeletons, which you believe were probably the gnomish workers. And then the larger skeletons were most likely the uh, ravenous forces that came and looted the place uh, when it was destroyed. And I'm trying to remember who did that. Who looted or who destroyed it? Who destroyed it? Yeah, it was bandits. So they're more human in nature. Uh, and as you are looking around at the pictures and seeing pictures of dwarves, are they smithing, posters or paintings? I think they are. The reliefs, which I believe are types of painting. Uh, okay. Uh, dwarves smithing gnomes. Um, enchanting and mining and their human wizard allies met, uh, used I don't know what they did they just sort of described as being there um you see those in the photos and then so, so I, I guess a relief is like an image carved into something so I yeah. guess there's like things carved into the wall yes that makes sense for what I understand a relief is but as you're enjoying looking around at this beautiful artwork and studying the skeletons, Frito starts getting the uh, usual tingling from his rapier of warning. Something's wrong, I can feel it. What Just is it, Frito? feeling I got. Does it... <laughs> I don't know what. Does it, like, tell you where the danger is coming from, or just that there's danger? It starts vibrating. It warns you of danger. Uh, so, I guess it instinctively sort of directs you to look upwards uh, and as you look up at the ceiling uh, you know you fought some of these creatures before before they're sort of the like bloodless albino bats that, that oh. you fought on your way to um 
Wyvern Tor, the uh, Stiges, Sturges, and there's six of them up on the ceiling that all leap forward to attack you, for they have not seen any prey in this cavern in a very long time. We're going to start initiative. I throw my shield over my head and scream like a little girl. <laughs> this, this should not... Yeah. We start, we start initiative. Uh, I have to edit all of these now, because Finn is here. Fuck. <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, Bats. initiative rolls for. Please. Bats in the dark. I suppose technically I should be the most used to a creature like this, but uh. You are not. Resistant. 